Hello again, it's good to be back with you. And this lesson is about the Monte Carlo method. And before we get started, let's talk about Monte Carlo for a minute. Monte Carlo is within the Principality of Monaco on the northern coast of the Mediterranean. And it was basically a place where uh, wealthy Europeans went to gamble. If you watch the old James Bond movies with uh, Sean Connery, the real James Bond, uh, he's often in Monaco playing Baccarat and doing adventurous things. So the idea here is that uh, a Monte Carlo method is somehow related to gambling. Well, in a sense it is. It uses random numbers. I guess that's probably where it comes from. And frankly, Monte Carlo method sounds a lot better than guessing, but that's, there, there's a lot of that going on too. Now, that makes it sound like a Monte Carlo method is kind of a silly way to solve a problem. It's not. There's a lot of research on it, and Monte Carlo methods work well for a range of mathematical problems. Now, the one we're going to be doing here is pretty basic, but they get pretty sophisticated. So if you want to read up on them, I, I encourage you to do that. So let, let me draw out something like a, a simple problem. Let me draw out the lifeguard problem. We've seen this hopefully a bunch of times by now. And if not, go check it out. Uh, let's see, there's, I'm going to call that T of X, actually. And there is pretty much our curve. And we know that X star is 87.208 meters. And we've seen this a bunch of times before. And the reason I keep going back to this problem is it's fairly simple to write down. We know what the answer is. And since it's so familiar, we can focus on the algorithm we're using rather than the mechanics of this one particular problem. Monte Carlo method, of course, will, is applicable to any, any 1D problem, actually any multi-dimensional problem as well. So the, the rules of our game here, we want to find the minimum of this objective function without doing a ton of calculations. In general, in practical uh, problems, Evaluating the objective function can be a very expensive thing to do, and so we're trying to find a minimum or an approximate minimum with as few of these expensive calculations as we can. Now, underlying all this is the is kind of an unwritten assumption. Well, sometimes we write it down that an approximate answer is a whole lot better than no answer. If the objective function is expensive enough to calculate, and if the uh, topology of design space is such that it kind of defeats more sophisticated methods, Monte Carlo always works. And Monte Carlo is pretty simple in, it, in its, in its uh, uh, most basic imp implementation, which is what we're doing here. Like I say, they do get very sophisticated. We're just dipping our toe in the water here. But works this way. Make up a list of, of random values of x. Okay. Now ours would go between 0 and 100 because that's how long the, we the, the dimensions of the problem we laid out. And we're going to pick a small number of random values of x, maybe 10. Evaluate the objective function at those 10 and pick the lowest. That's it. That's, that's Monte Carlo in its simplest form. Now we're going to, as we go through the uh, class, we'll go to some slightly more sophisticated uh, implementations of this. In, in the extreme, Monte Carlo methods can get quite sophisticated. So this is what it would look like. Well. One of the things about random numbers is they're not, I mean, on average, they're, you know, see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 2 more, 8, 9, 2 more, 10. There, there's 10 random numbers. Now, they're not uniformly distributed here. A small number of them won't be, even though we're going to be using something called a uniform distribution. Okay? If you get enough of them, then they really are uniformly distributed across the, uh, the range we're working in. But there's just going to be a couple along this, and they're going to be randomly distributed. We're simply going to pick the lowest one. So this one right here is the closest to the minimum. It looks like, draw that right there, closest to the minimum. Now, close, what does closest mean? Is it closest in x or closest in time? Could be either one. Um, we'd have to define what we mean. But right there, that would be the closest one. We've got a not terrible estimate of the minimum. We did it with 10 objective function evaluations. There's, there's some utility to that. That's actually not a bad way to go. If you don't know what else to do, this will always work. Because remember, you don't need the absolute minimum most of the time. Most of the time, you just need a better answer than where you started. Well, this is a way to do that. 
Now, it's not at all hard to implement in MATLAB. Let's go to that right now. Okay, here we are back in MATLAB, as usual. And you can see the five windows that make up the larger MATLAB window. And uh, if you don't see these windows on your computer when you boot up MATLAB or you see these and you'd like to change them, all you have to do is go to Layout here and you can set it up however you want it. Uh, MATLAB is extremely flexible and just about anything you can imagine you can do. And this is just another example of that. If you look down here in Command History, you can see some of the uh, commands I executed in, when I was setting up to do this screencast. So I'm going to go ahead and reuse some of those, pull those up again, rather than have you watch me retype the uh, uh, commands again. So I'm going to need to start by defining the objective function for the lifeguard problem. Uh, I've been calling it OBJ, so I'll keep doing that. So I'm going to type in OBJ and hit the up arrow on my keyboard, and that pulls back the last instance of a command that started with the letters OBJ. That's the one we want, so there it is. And there's the function in the workspace now. And this is a function, it's not a list of numbers. So let's take uh, a, a moment and plot that using easy plot, which is the one of the commands that'll plot a function for you. I'll type in easy plot and hit up arrow. So there's the last instance of a command that I used that started with the word letters easy plot. That's what I want. That'll plot the objective function from 0 to 100. Just hit that. And there it is. Now, as before, let me uh, rearrange the screen a little bit so we can see the MATLAB window and the uh, figure as well. So let's see, I'll put that over there and uh, slide that over there. Now, on the desk on my uh, the, my uh, office here at Purdue, I've got three monitors. And so normally I'll put this MATLAB uh, window in one monitor and this one over here in another monitor. But for this, our, our purposes right here, this works fine. You know, I, what I want to do is let's, let's go ahead and plot the location of the object, minimum of the objective function that we found analytically. That's x equals 87.208 meters and then the uh, time that goes along with that. So if we, we uh, want to put something else on this plot, I'm going to use the command hold on. And what that means is hold this plot, keep it on, and I'm going to add some stuff to it. Now, uh, my the command I used before, I started uh, like that. And hang on a second, let me see if I can make this window a little bigger. There we go. I'm not using these windows too much, so I'm going to go ahead and just shrink those down. The command I used before uh, plotted these two no, no, two points, and it did it in kind of a hardwired way. I actually hardwired the number in, which isn't really great technique, but there it is. So there's x star and there's f of x star. Now these, this stuff here you might not have seen before. This little uh, string right here, and it's a string because it's got those single quotes around it and it's purple. Purple is the MATLAB's way of telling you this is a string variable. And it says R plus. Well, R means red and plus means put a plus sign on the plot everywhere there's a point. Well, I've only got one XY point here, so there's only going to be one plus sign. Also, I want this thing big enough to see. So I decided to make the marker size 12. I think the default is like 6 or 8. So this is going to be a little bigger. And this is just one of the many parameters in the plot command. It's called marker size and set that to 12. So if I hit return, there's our, our big old plus right there. And there's other parameters I can set. You can go to the help file up here or just type in uh, your search uh, text up there and it'll go ahead and search for you. The other thing you can do is go to your favorite um, web search engine, Google or whatever, and you can ask for help there. There's many, many uh, websites, uh, sources for uh, code and videos and things on MATLAB. The international MATLAB community is pretty large, so there's plenty of help out there available to you. And also, of course, uh, Appendix C in the book, Fundamentals of Optimization, has MATLAB examples, including the source code in there for you as well. So the next thing to do is let's make a list of 10 random numbers. So I'm going to uh, assign those to the uh, variable name x. So there it is. There's Well, that's not exactly the one I wanted. That's the last one I ran. Let's go back up through the list of commands that started with x, and let's see what I get. 
Oop, there's the one I wanted. We'll use those other ones here in a minute. But the point is, as I go back up through the list, I can see all of them, all the, the commands I used that started with the letter X, just by hitting the up arrow a couple more times. So there we go. This makes a list of random numbers that are uniformly distributed. And these numbers here give me, uh, say, give me the size of the matrix you want me to generate. So 10 by 1, 10 rows, 1 column. I want a list of 10 random numbers, and so that does it. If I omit the 1, if I uh, put in that, it'll give me a 10 by 10 matrix of random numbers. Well, that's not what I want. Now, this is also not what I want. These numbers are all real tiny. They all, they're all between 0 and 1. That's because the RAND function gives you a list of number of uniformly distributed random numbers between 0 and 1. Well, I don't want between 0 and 1. I want between 0 and 100. So I'm going to multiply them by 100. And there they are. One last thing. It would be a little easier to look at if these things were all sorted. So let's recall that command. And let's also add the command sort. And I'll just nest these in here. I could actually say x equals sort x if I want to. And I'll, uh, that would work as well. There's one difference, though. Every time I execute RAND, I get a new list of random numbers. These are not these times 100. And the ones I get will not be these just sorted. If I said x equals sort x, it really would be these sorted. So MATLAB will do whatever you ask it to do, but just make sure that what you ask it to do is what you want. So there we go. It's a new list of random values of x, and now sorted from smallest to largest. Well, next thing I need is a list of objective function values that correspond to those. And I'll just do that. I'll push the list of this list x into the objective function definition up here. And I'll get a list of f's. And there they are. Well, some of them look pretty close. Right? But it's kind of hard to look at this. Let's go ahead and plot this. Let's see. x, comma, f. And let's make those blue zeros, blue O's, actually. OK, this says, here's the list of x's. Here's the list of objective function values. And every for every point on that list, make a blue O. And that's an O, the letter O, not the number 0. And there are, there are a bunch of different possibilities here, these parameter settings. And again, you can find them up there in help. So if I do that, look, there they are. Now, these are random numbers, and they are uniformly distributed on average. If you plot enough of these ran uniformly distributed random numbers on that plot, eventually they really would be distributed uniformly through here, but you need a lot of them. Now, I only asked for 10, so it's not unusual in lists of random uh, short list of random numbers to see numbers clumped like this, right there and right there. Now, the good news is, see right there? That one's actually pretty close to the minimum. Okay. And it looks like, uh, let's see, 87, there's 84. Yeah, that's pretty close. That's pretty close. And the really nice part is that the uh, minimum value of the objective function is also quite close to the true minimum. The, the true minimum is 40.166, and I got 40.19 right there. So let's go ahead and just double check and make sure we know what the minimum value of f is. And there it is. It's that point right there. Well, this is nice, but that doesn't tell me where it lives in that list. list. It just tells me what the minimum is. I can make uh, one modification here. And I'm recalling a command I used before. The function min has a couple different possible outputs. If I add this stuff to the front of it, what that means is give me the minimum value of, in that list f, assign that number to f, the variable name f underscore star, and i, tell me what its address is in that list. So if I do this right, I should get f star should equal that number, and i should be 9. And there it is. OK, let's go ahead and uh, make x star equal to x sub i, the ninth, ninth uh, number in that list, which should be 84.9129. So let's just do that. There it is. OK, so now I have f star and x star. Those are variables. And those are the val minimum value of the objective function and the x uh, location for the minimum value of the objective function. Let's go ahead and plot that as well. 
Oops, not, not in that order. There you go. And let's put a blue plus there. Okay. So that we know we've got these random points. We you know we know which one's the minimum by looking, but let's just mark it. Let's just formally make sure we know where it is. Plot that. See that little plus showed up there? That shows us that that point right there is our approximate minimum. That's the smallest uh, value of the objective function we found using our list of random numbers. So there you are. We've got quite close to the uh, true minimum value of the objective function. Uh, our location in X is only a couple of meters off, but the good news is the minimum time has hardly changed at all. We're talking a few hundredths of a second. Well, that's certainly not enough to matter. So we've got quite a good answer, and we've only evaluated the objective function 10 times. So that was pretty efficient. Now, are we going to get exact, you know, that close every time? Probably not. Almost certainly not. We got lucky, and there, there, this list of random points happen to be clustered around the minimum, but that won't always be true. So there you go. There's the Monte Carlo method. We found an approximate minimum value for the lifeguard problem. Hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.